The Calgary Flames blow a 2-0 lead, falling to the Washington Capitals on Monday night. 3-2, the final after a shootout. So the Flames now 1-1-1 to start the year. And this one, there's no way around it. This is a tough loss for the Calgary Flames to, to take. You have a 2-0 lead. Um, they got the first 13 shots of the game. They had 18 of the first 21 and 18 of the 21 shots that happened in the first period. And then in the second period, just a bit of a breakdown. Gilbert pinches. There isn't really anyone back to, to help support. It lets Washington come out with a, a bit of an odd man rush like Ruzicka's there, but he's not really there. Um, and Sonny Milano finds Matthew Phillips, of all people, who gets his first career NHL goal. And from there, I don't want to say, oh, in the, the my how the turntables and Washington completely controlled the game after that because the Flames were still fine um but that one was a real like the, the Flames I felt had a chance to maybe have a bit of a foot on the throat moment and then didn't capitalize um in in any way and so because of that they fall in this game um three to two but this was a great showing um, for this team to, to start. But when you have Milano, who was on the Flames as a PTO, but then Matthew Phillips, who didn't get a crack with the Flames last year, leaves um, for, for Washington and comes up with a, a big goal, then that is an absolute backbreaker for this hockey club. Um, like, it, it just, for lack of a better term, it just feels bad. You know, it, it's just a bit of like a, ugh, of course that was going to happen. For Matthew Phillips, you're excited, right? Like, he did not get the opportunity that he probably should have with the Flames last season, um, comes in this year and gets a, a goal for, for Washington. So, like, I don't know if this is one that they're going to, to rue the day for forever. It's a different administration now. We, we all kind of agreed Daryl Sutter sucked, um, and it, it was totally understandable that, that Matthew Phillips wanted to, to be out of there. But after that, you just, you would like to see this version, like who was left in the Flames, finish a little bit more. Like I said, they had an 18-3 shot edge. They had the first 13 shots of the game. And then, like, it's it's weird to be disappointed by being up 2-0, but you're kind of disappointed that they were only up 2-0. And this is where it kind of comes back to haunt you, right? Like, you just, you have that much control over a game, but one one little misstep, one little bounce, and then all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, a McMichael shot bounces in off of a skate, and the game is tied. A game that you felt like you were in complete control of is tied, and so that this is one of the things we were talking about coming into the season. Where are the goals coming from? Thirty-four of them walked out of the door last year with Tyler Toffoli on a team that already felt behind scoring, and so. Yes, it's great. Matt, uh, Matt Coronado feels like he's going to have a real impact on this team. Um, you shouldn't just be relying on him and Sharon Govich, a couple of kids in their early 20s. Like, oh yeah, no, they'll, they'll be the ones to, to get it back up and going. This team needs a bit more finish um, if they want to compete in the ways that I think a lot of people want them to compete. Uh, they get five the first night, so it, it's, you know, there, there's a little bit there. But I think as we are seeing now, there needs to be a bit more scoring touch on this team for them to be a, a real threat, in my opinion. One player who did stand out for the Flames in this last one was Dylan Dubé, and I kind of talked about him on the game over Calgary that I was on after Saturday night's game um, against the, the Pittsburgh Penguins. He just kind of feels like he's there sometimes, but... On Monday, you got the exact version of Dylan Dubé that you would want to get. Um, he made a couple of strong plays defensively, but then offensively, he goes back behind the goal, wins a puck, helps keep it alive on the power play, goes right to the front of the net, tip scores. Like, he he's not a huge guy, but he is someone who can play a bit more of a, a rugged style, and th those are the types of things you want to see from him. Go in there, help out with puck retrieval, be very difficult to play against, and score some dirty goals while also helping out defensively. That is the Dylan Dubé this Calgary Flames team needs. Um, I don't know if it's one that's going to get him on a first or second line, but it, if you have him with, um, whether it's Kadri and, and Rosicka or whether it's Backlund and Coleman, those are going to be valuable, valuable plays for Dylan Dubé to continue to get ice time with this team and continue to make an impact with the Calgary Flames. Um, mentioned him before, but another good game for, for Matt Coronado. He comes up with a, a nice back check to, to create a steal that stops a, a breakout for Washington and creates a bit more zone time. It's just, it's he seems already to be doing all of those little things, right? Like, his awareness in the offensive end, great. Um, I, I don't think he's going to get many Selkie votes in his career, but he is someone who I think is going to be able to, to go out, have those hustle plays, the effort 
effort plays that at least get in the way defend, uh, of the other team when, when you're on defense. And that's kind of all you can ask for. It just feels like each game you see Matt Coronado play, there's another little thing that he does that contributes to winning. And those are the, the types of things you absolutely love to see from your young players. Um, another positive, I think it kind of felt like a, a bit more of an improved game defensively for the Flames. It seemed like there was a bit more structure to, to their game. There was a little bit less running around like chickens with their, their heads cut off. And this is something I, I talked about again on Game Over on Saturday. Everything here is new. Right? D uh, Daryl Sutter is out, and they wanted to get as far away from Daryl Sutter hockey as possible. So, there's going to be a bit of a change. And one of the things that's going to take the longest is defensive systems. And I, I think this is still something that's going to improve as the season goes along. And so I, I think Jacob Markstrom is a, a big ad for fantasy football, or for fantasy hockey, sorry. But I, I think that this is going to be a Flames team that is going to be competitive defensively all season long. So, uh, a frustrating loss, a disappointing loss, but not a backbreaker by any stretch of the imagination. We'll see if the Flames can bounce back on Thursday. 